Dr. Trauma. Hey, Dr. Trauma, how are you? Jeff, all caps. Hello, all caps. Um, off leash my husky today. Huskies can't be off leash. <laughs> they can't even be. You can't even train a husky not to pull. I don't believe this nonsense. Today to park with medium to high distractions. He crushed it. Still have things to work on, but this is huge. Dr. Trauma, it's fucking amazing. I love it when people say huskies can't be off leash. Mm, they're a dog, right? I mean, you can train a chicken, actually. So you can train a pig. Uh, you can train a husky, too. Uh, so, yeah, huskies can be off leash, and they can also recall, and beagles can also walk without having their nose on the ground. So awesome job. And all that means, Dr. Trauma, is you've been fucking killing it. Good for you. Next. And we're live. And it says we're live. Hey, everybody. How are you? We're live. It's Jeff Kevin of Solid Canine Training. Good evening. What's, the, what's, what's today? Saturday. Saturday. Happy Saturday, everybody. How's everybody doing? Um, it's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've been doing this show pretty consistently now. The What Would Jeff Do show? It's on every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Mondays we do at 8.30. It's in Linda's contract. Um, it's a one-hour show. Wednesdays and Saturdays we do for... 90 minutes. Um, next week, I'll be in, uh, I don't know, to Austin on Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. And on Saturday. So we might not do a show unless I do one by myself. Have fun. I guess I can sort of do one by myself. I can do some, I can, I can help people out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll help people out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll do something. We'll do something. Um, but they won't be able to be. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Anyway, for everybody that's on Spotify, SoundCloud, on Google, on uh, Alexa, that is listening to this on obviously YouTube Live, on iHeartRadio, thank you so much. If you like the show, give us a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the show, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell for your notifications so you find out about when I do my live videos and also when I put up new videos. We're putting up about two to three new videos a day. Comments are open now on all the videos. The way this works is it is a Q&A show. So you ask a question in your little chat box right underneath your name at the bottom. Right underneath that is a little dollar sign. The dollar sign is something called Top Chat or Super Chat. It's something that YouTube has um, uh, put into place for for creators like myself to continue putting out free content. Um, I personally use that money for date night with my wife, Linda. This is Joelle. We work together. And um, you'll see Linda on Monday night show. And, and a lot of people are like, oh, what do you do? You do, you know, use it for the dogs. Like, fuck that. I'm using it for myself. That goes to me. In fact, that's going out. You know what it is going to go do tomorrow? Tomorrow's going to be family day. We're going to be doing lunch and a movie. I think we're going to see Mary Poppins tomorrow. And then we'll probably eat the Panera bread. Or we might actually eat at the food court. Um, so we'll see. I prefer Panera bread. Healthier option. You know me. Uh, if you're brand new to my world, I talk about punishment a lot. The reason why I talk about punishment in this context, in this show, because you'll notice that most of the questions say, hey, Jeff, how do I stop this? Whenever you want to stop an unwanted behavior or stop a behavior in a dog, you have to apply an aversive. So you have to master the application of punishment to stop an unwanted behavior. Um, you know, a lot of you're going to hear a lot of words like, "Oh, positive reinforcement and force free." First of all, force free, free is a scam. It's a marketing um, phrase. There is no such thing as force free. It's actually a marketing phrase. Force free doesn't exist in the world. Um, maybe if you're dead, it's probably force free. But there's always some force out there that's making you do something. So that's just a scam. And then positive reinforcement is something that we don't talk a lot about in this show, but we do a lot of. But believe it or not, application of punishment, call it negative reinforcement, positive punishment, call it whatever you want to, actually is the most reliable way to actually proof an existing command, but the only way to eliminate an unwanted behavior. So don't believe um, what you hear um, from a lot of other folks that love to sound really, really smart and quote science because they're getting it wrong. Uh, so you'll, and I swear on my show. So if you've got kids out there, I swear. Um, I can't help it. It's passionate. Yeah. Well, that's not the first that's, part. Uh, that's, that's right. So that's not TM. So we can, can use that. All right, Joelle, here we go. Here we go. Dan, 
Hi, Jeff. First walk with Prong today. He walked beautifully for the most part. Still small lunges. Other dogs, not as bad, but still nervous. Will this pass over time? And also, he does do a bit of mouthing, although he's one year old. But today, he snapped at my partner and daughter and went for a real bite. Heard his teeth clatter this over something he was chewing. Okay. He's never done that before. He's never done that before. Okay. So, first thing, Dan. First question first. You did a two-parter here. Okay. You've had a dog that was probably lunging at other dogs. You walked him for the first time with a prong collar today. And it wasn't perfect. So what's your question? Get where I'm going to? You walked him for the first time. You did it once. And it wasn't perfect. Great. Do it a thousand times. Let me know how it goes. Okay. Second second part. Your dog is a one year old, one year old dog. It's going into maturity now. You're going to get a lot of snarky behavior. You're going to get a lot of pushy behavior. You're going to get possibly more. The mouthing might turn into biting. It's an objection. The if anybody out there says the prong collar made the dog aggressive, they're stupid. Okay, they're just they're they're literally they they are actually an idiot. And the reason why they are an idiot is because. I, as well as many of my colleagues who specialize in aggression rehab, who deal with true biting dogs, dogs that have bitten people on the face, that have put people in the hospital, dogs that have killed other dogs, have, number one, been de-sexed, so having balls didn't fucking make them do it. Two, no tools were ever on them, so the tool didn't make them do it. So that's a ridiculous argument out there. So why is your dog doing it? Because it's older now. It's saying no. You've always had a mouthing issue. That's why we eliminate mouthing at 12 weeks old, 13 weeks old, 14 weeks old, and we're very firm with it. So next. Up, top, chat. top chat. Batman. Hello, Batman. <laughs> Bread's not your friend, but I am. Albert from Chicago. Well, Brett's my friend. you're right. It's so funny because I grew up with a kid named Bread, <laughs> and we're not friends anymore. So I'm not quite sure how you knew that, Albert. Albert, I'll be in Chicago, buddy, for a seminar. I hope to see you there next. Josue, my GSD puppy growls when my older GSD tries to take her bone. That's not allowed. Should I correct them both or one for stealing and one for growling? No. Give the give the give the um the adult dog a swat on the ass with a stockyard whip or throw don't throw a bonker because it'll hit might hit both dogs. I would say no and well, just correct the correct correct the bigger dog. That's not a, that's not allowed. Next, Samantha, thank you for the advice to do a heel to the chest. Uh, one heel tap heel tap to the chest for the dog forging ahead. Next, one little one was all it took for our dog to not pull me into the snow tonight. Now she stays where I need her to in order to safely walk her to go potty. What do you know? One little bit of it, one little bit of advice worked. So what? What Samantha? You're welcome, Samantha. Proud of you. So we're not telling people to kick dogs in chests, um, but you actually can give it a toe tap if it comes out of its crate. Very effective, actually. This is a great pressure source for dogs. They actually understand that quite well. Um, it's also it's just their sternum. You're not going to hurt them. Um, if you did, well, then you're just doing something wrong. Um, but it's just a heel tap to the chest. Awesome job. Next. Storm. Hey, Storm. Hi, Jeff. I would like to become a working dog trainer, training service dogs, sport dogs, etc. Do you have any suggestions on trainers that I could shadow in the Cincinnati area? Um, no, I don't. Um, you might want to separate those out. Not to say that there's aren't people out there that do service and sport. There are, I actually know somebody in Florida, but usually service dog training falls along with, they do pet dog training and then service dog training and sport training is sport. You're utilizing typically two different drives of the dog and, and sort of two, you definitely want a, your average working dog to be in a different state of mind than a sport dog does when it's working. So it's historically different, you know, temperament wise, um, it might be, it might be similar. I mean, a true service dog needs to have actually a really solid temperament. Um, sometimes they've got a much better temperament um, than sport dogs. Also, a lot of your service dogs, you actually want them to get all excited and go into drive like a sport dog does. But um, the only working dog trainer that I know is going to be Eric Stambro at Van S Canine up in Canton, Ohio. I'm doing a seminar there. So Van S, uh, Van S, Van S. So it's Eric Stambro. S-T-A-N-B-R-O, Working Dog Radio. He's actually one of the hosts slash owners of Working Dog Radio as well. Next. 
Mike, hey guys, how many commands should I try to work on with my dog in a given session? I understand it would be handler and dog dependent, but general rule of thumb, should I master one before adding? Don't master one because your dog will learn one command a year, right? Um, so what I would do, Mike, is I would I would work on, you can work on you know a little bit of everything or do one a day. Do one a day and then week two, do each one a day. But the way we look at it is this. A lot of that stuff is life. Like you got to take your dog for a walk today, theoretically. Your dog's got to go in a crate today. Your dog's got to wait for its food. Your dog has to probably, you know, sit. You can Down, you can wait a little bit on to, to do place. So you can work on one or two a day if you want to, but you're going to be able to, within week two, you're going to be able to start doing them all. Next. Melinda, evening, everyone. Glad to be receiving the live notifications recently. Yeah, Melinda, I don't know what the fuck happened last time. So good. Glad to have you here. Kira, every time I see that name, I want to say it like how you say Kira's. Kira. Dog now doing great at no pulling on prong on walk, but now runs behind me scared when cars and any noise or people, dogs go by, etc. Better choice, but how can I help her get through this next phase? Right. So that's what that is. That is a choice. I can't pull away, so now I'll run and hide. It's still flight, right? So what you're going to do is... Tighten up your heel. So if a dog was properly keeling next to you, so we don't do standard loose leash like, you know, AKC um, confirmation, which I'm not against. We just don't do that. Like, you know, the leash in a J. We don't do that. We're pet dog trainers. Not to say a pet dog train, a pet dog owner can't do that, but we like to give the dog only as much leash as it needs. And if it's right next to us, it has a little bit of looseness. And if it moves a little bit ahead, it goes, it feels something. And if it goes a little bit behind, it feels something. So I would shorten up the leash. So it's almost, it's only a little bit longer than necessary, a little bit longer than necessary. And if you pull, there's a consequence. If you flee, there's a consequence. And I know the dog is nervous. I know that, but it can also get hit by a car if it tries to run away. Next. Diana, hello. What other commands or extra work should I expect out of a 14 month old? Just walk me through what's the XP expectation for a 14 month 14, 14 month or week month if it's truly a 14 month old dog the dog should know everything all basic obedience do advanced obedience it's 14 months old if it's 14 weeks old which it might be sometimes people are like oh i meant 14 weeks um because most people say 14 months they would say a year yeah that's why so it could be 14 weeks for 14 weeks you can start working on all your basics but don't don't expect it's all food training all food marker training but don't expect much duration and then around distraction the dog's going to be distracted so work it in a sterile environment next jose hey jeff at what age do i introduce the e-collar to my german shepherd you could well any dog it doesn't have to be a german shepherd usually at 14 weeks old you can start introducing the collar because when working on low levels which are your working levels um it's 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 very similar to to leash to leash pressure and it also keeps gets the dog smarter dogs have to sort of figure some things out too you know you training a dog on a on a remote collar really helps them use their brain by the way everyone's like oh i've heard every argument by the way guys i'm not ignorant to the conversation just because i preach one thing that doesn't mean i don't hear or aware of everything else people love to remind me daily of what i don't know um, uh, so, uh, but it really makes the dog think you want to talk about problem solving and troubleshooting and like starting these dogs for really start processing information. I mean, some of it's similar to free shaping, believe it or not. So, I mean, it's really, really, it's when you do it right, it's really cool. Next. Um, did I say answer 14 weeks old? Sorry to answer 14 weeks old. Next. Yes. You what age? Okay. Melissa says, hey, Jeff and Joelle. And she said, what day did you say? I could help with a live show. Um, ooh, well, hold on here. You can do a live show too. From what? When you're gone? Yeah. We can co-host it side by each, no. I think. Okay. You, you, um, Melissa, Wednesday and Saturday. But let's talk with, um, but I'm in a different time zone, which doesn't make a difference. I'm in, I'm in Central. I'm in Austin. But let's, let's see if we, Joelle and I can do it. Let's see if we can make her do it. Not make her do it. Let's see. If, <laughs> so let's see if we can make it happen. Yeah, I'll we'll do it. Um, Sebastian, I have a 16 week old rough collie who's a service dog in training, already naturally alerting, really sweet, but still puppy like. Does it get better as they get older? Ha ha. Sebastian, are you? Being, is that a serious question? If it's a serious question, why are you putting ha ha? 
Um, if it's not a serious question, well, then you're right. Ha ha. Because you know it gets better. It's four months old. And, and it's in training, but but we don't know what's going to happen with it yet. So anytime anybody has a service dog candidate or a service dog in training, you have no idea if it's going to work out. It could be a washout because it's so young. Usually you don't know until at least a year old before you actually put a task on them. So um, because you don't know what the, how they're going to be as an adult. Uh, but if everything gets better or it also could get worse. It can go both ways. It all depends on your it all depends on your dog raising skills and your dog training knowledge. That's what a lot of it. I mean, nature has something to do with it. Um, some key critical things, but I think nurture is way more important. Next. Andrew Jen. Hey, hey, it's Jen. Pump for your seminar in February. Uh, Jen, I'm very excited as well. So are you talking about Flor you're talking about Florida? I think. Jen, you're not in Florida, aren't you? Is she in Florida or is she in Seattle? But anyway, jeffgelmanseminars.com, jeffgelmanseminars.com. Florida, working spots are sold out. Um, Seattle, plenty of audit spots, though. You can still come. Um, and in Seattle, we've got both available still. Next. All righty. Anthony, for out command, dog wouldn't touch the ball for until the next day. Yep. Next day, he would play just fine, but this time drop the ball on command out. How do they know to differentiate that? Cool. You want to know why your dog did it successfully? Don't fucking question it. <laughs> Anthony, don't question it. I think it was just a statement. You said it was cool. It is cool. <laughs> it's like I remember the first time I got laid. It's like, how the fuck, how the fuck did that happen? It's like, Gelman, like, don't question it. Why did you want to sleep with me? <laughs> So next, um, she's like, Jeff, it's five hundred dollars. I said, Oh, <laughs> great! Actually, it was only one hundred twenty-five. Next, Melee and Dante, yay! Get to see a live show finally. Two a.m. here. Love you guys. Hey, how are you? You're six hours ahead of me. So, what part of Europe are you in? Guess we'll find out. Yeah, you're not in the UK. I think it's UK is five hours, right? I think UK is five hours. Some parts might be six. Anyway, next. Amy, just getting into your stuff, and I love it. Great additional help along with the trainer I'm working with who also worked with you. Three-year-old German Shepherd learning to not be an asshole. Yes. Yeah, let's let's non-asshole that dog really fucking quick. It's three years old. Okay, shape up or ship out. <laughs> Melvin, maybe a silly question. What is the difference between place and down? Is place for a specific place and down could be done anywhere? Melvin, you're smarter than you think you are. That's exactly what it is. Place is always an object. It's always like, so my I got three dogs on dog beds right now next to me. They're lying down. To me, I should probably make this video. What my old, old video I made a long time ago on place, I was a little bit more selective on what they can do. Now it's mandatory down. Now it's mandatory down. So place, go to the object and lie down. Um, we're down. Yes, down is anywhere. Like on any surface, on any object, anywhere you are, where place you sort of need something to put the dog on, which is pretty cool because you can send your dog to it as well. Next. Heather, trying to train my dog to walk backward, but she keeps sitting down. Leash pressure back up means sit. Tried walking toward her and nudging her backward, but she just hops back a bit and sits. Any tips? Backward walking will be used for healing, but just trying to get backward walk down first. Yeah, um, I don't, we don't teach a backward walk. I would talk to a sport dog trainer. I believe they actually pop the collar front away from the dog while they put pressure uh, 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 physical pressure on the dog backwards. I believe it, it goes counter. I believe if you pop back, the dog is going to default to a sit, but by popping front, I don't know this. I don't train this. Um, and then using your body pressure, the dog moves backwards. And I think a good way to do that is up against a wall. Also, you can also do it with a food lure as well, with a food down by your waist, and you can walk the dog backwards as well. But again, talk to somebody that actually does that. I don't do that. Next. Janelle, hi guys. Wanted to know, I watched all your videos and just want to find out when I send this dog home, will she apply my teaching? She's dog aggressive, but she's doing great at my house. Thanks. So you're a dog trainer? So if you're a dog trainer working with aggressive dogs... You, um, number, you know, so thanks for asking. You probably should do a council. We should talk business things because the, and the reason is, is because it might not, it's not going to live with a dog trainer. 
It's not living with a dog trainer. Working with aggression is an art. And the and the 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 number one thing is owner compliance and owner knowledge, not necessarily the work we do. So I can give somebody my dogs and they call me up in 30 minutes and say, Jeff, these dogs are so difficult to work with. It's like, my guys? No, they're not. I find them easy to work with because I can work with them. But so with, with aggression though, if you're going to take on aggression cases, you need to have a reasonable level of expectation conversation with your owners and you need a lot more information than your skill set. Your skill set is only about 25% tops of the equation working in rehabbing aggressive dogs. 75% and more of the equation is the owner's and the owner's situation and the environmentals in the owner's house, which will either be successful or not successful. And if there's other dogs in the house and then what they're like. So that's a really broad question. It's a broad question. Next. Um, Anthony, we correct dogs to not go for treats when dropped on ground, took him a day to accept them, but only when given when he's polite, he learned to differentiate. Amazing. Took only two bonks. Uh, Anthony, I know. Well, this training fucking shit sort of <laughs> works that I suggest. I mean, you know, there, there's, yeah, we don't have a hundred percent success rate swimming. I think I do, but there's not a hundred percent success rate in anything. When you work with aggressive dogs, your rate of failure dramatically increases. I mean, every dog theoretically can learn how to, you know, sit down place, you know, walk on a leash politely. I mean, you know, you know, theoretically, every dog, every dog can do that. Um, but aggression rehab, hell no. If anybody says they're 100% successful, it's like, well, number one, maybe successful with you, the trainer, but how about with the owner? Owner success is what is the, the determination of your skill set is how successful the owner is. That's that's the big thing. That's what we get paid for. We don't get paid for to boost our egos by showing what we can do. And we show what we can do. But that's not where we get our egos fed through. Our egos get fed through our, the success of our owners. And if the owners aren't successful, well, then, you know, we always take 100% responsibility at first. It's like, well, what could we have done? What did we do? And it could be as simple as we should have never taken the dog from that owner in the first place, not because of the dog, but because of the owner. So we don't do assessments of dogs. We do assessments of owners. And that's not knocking owners at all. It's absolutely not knocking owners. I love owners. And if anybody's been watching me a while, I advocate for owners. I advocate for them so much that I turn down more business a week than we get, than, than we let hire us. Every week, I turn down business. I say, nope, you can't hire us. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, every boarding train is $3,500 to $5,000. I turn down at least two or three a week because I don't think it will work for that family. Levels of expectation are not reasonable in the time allotted that we have to do it and the setup of the home and also the dog's existing existing issues that it comes to us with. Now, will the dog do well with us? Absolutely. Almost 100%. Great. Now the owners. So it's ethics. I'll share a conversation. It's too fresh to share it today, but I had two very powerful conversations with clients today that are going to alter lives of dogs. And most, almost every trainer that I know would have said, leave them here longer and pay us more money. And the owners probably would have done it. But that's not ethically fair, in my opinion. It's not ethically fair. Nope. We charge a lot. But I also will say, no, it's not going to work. Because we're dealing with a live animal. I'm going to do a tip of the day soon, maybe tomorrow that's semi-relatable, but I can't quite connect the dots for everybody yet because it's 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 not fair. Next. Uh, Michelle. Hi, Jeff and Joelle. Drinking tea from my What Would Jeff Do cup. Oh, so am I. So is he. I drank coffee for mine today. Uh, tea. Ooh, it's mint. Nice. Enlightened canine perspective. Every time I successfully get through a difficult board and train, I feel like I owe a thank you, Jeff. Aggression so extreme this year at the shelter was spent in the kitchen, so he never had to see a dog. Yeah. Well, thank you for the shout out. I mean, this is the thing. I can only pass on knowledge. And that's why I pass it on for free. Because if someone uses it, 
we all win. If they don't use it, that's okay. It, it's I don't pass on knowledge with any expectation of anything in return. Therefore, I win every single time I open my mouth. So when people actually pass, when actually utilize the knowledge and utilize it, it's a win-win, man. It's awesome. Good night, Joel. Good oh, night, Angelo. Good night. How are you? Hey, Angelo. Hey, congrats on your new belt today. Thank you. Hey, she just congratulated you for getting your new okay, belt. You new Thank belt. you. Do you want to tell everybody what's happening with you? Mm. We're starting, Angelo is starting a YouTube channel, right? About time. Yeah. Be, he's wanted to be a YouTuber for about a year and a half, ever since he was like four. He's like, Papa, I want to be a YouTuber. Well, he's just I, when when he was in his four, smart ass. Okay. Actually, that was Rowan. when I was five, not four. You got the numbers mixed up. Okay, all right. Mathematician. Okay, get out of here, smarty pants. Ow! Okay. I was four. <laughs> all right, next. Uh, Jordan, hi J and J. You've responded in the past. I could be underling corrections. I'm stopping barking at home, which has turned into tiny micro growling, yeah. or clearly stressed. What can I do differently? Now this is the thing, man. If he's well stressed right now, it's like, oh well, get over it, buddy. Not you, the dog, right? But you could be underwhelming the dog. I would switch to a bonker. No bonk. Next. Um, and light and canine perspective. By the way, I'm not new. Just changed my YouTube name, Michael. Oh, hey, Michael. How are you, buddy? Did I, did I say you were new? I don't, think, I don't so. think so. Hey, Michael. How are you? I like the new name, bud. It's nice. John, love your show. I learn a lot from you. You're great. Oh, John, thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words. Kaylee, going to the Florida seminar. Very, very <laughs> excited. Trying to be a groupie and get some shirts beforehand. <laughs> Join Th the club. Thank you. So... Keep the so Joel will read you the groupie right the the groupie rights, okay? Gotta keep y'all in check. To be careful how groupie is she get, but that's good. Thank you, I appreciate it. It's, a, it's a, seminars are fun. Seminars are fun. Next, Jay Wynn. After finding working level on the e collar, where's a good place to start for my pop place recall, etc. Uh, place of both place and recall. Do the thing that comes like don't do down and don't do sit. So we've always said, don't do down. Sit, I'll start adding that in too. We've never really said, oh, don't do sit. Because sit, a lot of dogs have already trained. But when your dog's on a remote, I like to do active commands, sort of like active, like moving around stuff. So get the dog to move away from you to go to place or come towards you for recall. That's always a good thing. And it's and it's and and it can be casual. It can be casual. You got to teach the dog how to turn the pressure on and off. So next. Um, Sean, I feel like you get this question a lot. If it's annoying, my apologies. I think my Malinois has a little separation anxiety. Any tips? So, Sean, yeah, I do get that question a lot. I get every question a lot, Sean. It's never annoying. If it's annoying, I shouldn't be fucking doing this, right? So, how many dog training questions can there possibly be? Seriously. This is my, what, 505th show? There's actually been more than that. This is ever since we just started counting. Um, so... Uh, as far as your Malinois, the least of your concerns with a Malinois, but we'll start with a Malinois having separation anxiety. The first thing I want you to do is this, buddy, is go to my YouTube channel, which you're in, in the search box of my channel, type in separation anxiety. There's a video there to watch. Watch that video first, apply everything in there, and then start trying that and then tune back in Saturday night and let me know how it's going. Let me know how it's going. All right? Top chat. Top chat. 499 from Randy Smith. Hey, Randy. Hey, Jeff and Joel. Can't wait to meet you both in Wisconsin at your training seminar. Wisconsin's going to be fine. Ooh. Wisconsin's coming up too, isn't it? No, it wouldn't have been. It's got to be in the spring. Yeah. I wouldn't have done it in the winter. Like yeah, yeah. I'm not doing any Winter, I'm all like down south or out west. Next. Um, Parish, Parish. I have an American Bulldog, German Short Hair Pointer mix. Looks like a big pit bull. He wants to go after anything that moves, like leaves blowing across the yard, etc. Any ideas? Yeah, tons of ideas. Impulse control. So teach the dog impulse control. So number one, you know, if the dog's if the dog's on a leash or off a leash. Okay. So, uh, but bottom line is, the dog's on a leash. You can correct it manually with a leash and a prong collar. You know, it, it's not. It's instead of go at. Is it go after or just wants to chase? Like. Dogs like moving things. They do, which is really cool when you want to play games with them or get them to get some exercise or be in sports with them or, 
you know, do agility or do a trick or a task. So dogs like moving things. Um, so it's not uncommon. So what you want to do is you want to put an on-off switch in your dog, teach your dog how to do nothing around environmentals, and then teach your dog how to be like out and about and calm underneath of environmentals. But then also like utilize your dog's drive for like, you know, fetch or frisbee or something like that. So how do you, how do you do it is, is you would teach, uh, teach a basic behavior such as down, you know, inside the house with, with no leaves, get your dog to master that. And then you would then start dropping and moving things around, like take a ball and bounce it or a basketball and bounce it or throw something on the ground um, and then get the, and then reinforce the dog's place. And then you can go outside and try duplicating it outside as well. But you're talking about something that's naturally dogs do naturally no matter what the breed is, historically they do it naturally. So we just don't want them to do it when we when we, when we we don't want them to do it because they can get hit by a car. If a dog was in the backyard and it's all fenced in and it's free time, who gives a shit? And you can actually you can actually play in both worlds if you want to. Top chat, $5. Dr. Trauma, hey, Dr. Trauma, how are you? Jeff, all caps. Hello, all caps. Um, off leash my husky today. Huskies can't be off leash. <laughs> they can't even be... You can't even train a husky not to pull. I don't believe this nonsense. Today to park with medium to high distractions. He crushed it. Still have things to work on, but this is huge. Dr. Trauma, it's fucking amazing. I love it when people say huskies can't be off leash. Mm, they're a dog, right? I mean, you can train a chicken, actually. So you can train a pig. Uh, you can train a husky, too. Uh, so, yeah, huskies can be off leash, and they can also recall and beagles can also walk without having their nose on the ground. So awesome job. And all that means, Dr. Trauma, is you've been fucking killing it. Good for you. Next. TL Brazy 60 uh, suggestions for stopping indiscriminate eating. He'll pick up leaves, twigs, whatever is in reach. Today it was a poisonous mushroom. Had to induce vomiting. There you go. So we're going to talk about shock collars right now. Got it? Because if you wouldn't have seen that poisonous mushroom, it might not have killed the dog, but it could have. You know, it depends how much, how many, how many grams they ate of it. So, you know, this is the thing. Remote collar on the dog, shock collar on the dog. What do we do? Set our dogs up to fail. Absolutely. Set them up to fail. Go ahead. Try eating that fucking mushroom. I'll make your world suck. Have to. Twig. Dog can die from that. Believe it or not, maybe it's a bigger than a twig. Maybe it impacts something. Maybe next thing you know, they take a shit and out comes fucking a stream of blood. Why? Hmm. What color is the blood? Reddish? Blackish? Jeez. Is it just from a freaking stretched out sphincter? Did we actually fucking pierce something in there? Do we have to go in for surgery? What's that going to cost? Okay. I know the cost of a shock collar and the cost of pushing the button is nothing. So let's get ourselves a shock collar. All right. And that's what you do. All right. Andrew, a family that adopted a treeing walker coonhound mix from my rescue when he was eight weeks old. Now a 70-pound puppy with zero training. Why are you laughing? Because as soon as you told me the breed of the dog, I'm like, okay. It can't be, you're probably not going to say, it's the best dog ever. Let me finish. Zero training. Family does not want to give up. Dog follows sense advice. Dog wants it, doesn't want to give up. The dog... The, 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 they don't want to give up. They don't want to give up. They haven't fucking started. What do you mean they don't want to give up? They don't want to give up. It's the like, dog. yeah, I'm going to stick with his diet. You haven't fucking started yet. How's your how's your workout routine going? I'm going to stick to it. You haven't got your fucking ass off the couch in three months. <laughs> well, well, what's the routine? <laughs> what is it? Oh, yeah, I've been doing eight-ounce curls. Oh, yeah, I've heard that fucking one before. <laughs> Get off the fucking couch. So uh, as far as eight weeks old, so this is the thing is, first of all, I hope they're not calling it a rescue dog because eight weeks old, they got the dog from the fucking breeder. It just happened to be your rescue. Um, this is the thing. Yes. Number one, get them the proper tools. Send them to my website. So the first thing I would do is send them to my website. And if they're like, oh, my gosh, this guy is the devil. It's like, okay, good luck. Good luck then. So then send them a bunch of clicker videos and we use clickers and food. Okay. Send them those and they can do all the stuff that's fun. 
and let's see how far they get with that that, that dog. Um, the, the best thing you can do is this: is now if you if you want to work with them, like if they want to hire you as the trainer, where do you start? Proper tools, prong collar, remote collar, and let's get that dog to at least walk, kennel up on command, do place, um, uh, 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 some leadership skills, things like that. We'll teach that dog how to not be aroused and tell those owners to massive amounts of structure. So they're going from zero structure to massive amounts of structure. It's a big eye opener. Next. Sue, just got my I'm not mad, I'm passionate t-shirt in the mail. Can't wait to wear it to my dog training club because that's exactly how I am. Not mad, passionate. Sue, good job. Next. <laughs> Laura, hey guys, boss is still doing good on the prong and e-collar. Any tips for calming him when approaching new dogs? He gets so excited, whines and barks, even when just seeing them at a distance. Yeah, I'm a big um, advocate of correcting all that nonsense. So I correct it. And, and when you say approaching... As in going to greet them or just approaching them, they're in the distance and you're closing the gap, you know, you're closing the space in between, um, uh, uh, you know, the two of you. Uh, I don't want dogs to get excited when they see another dog or another human being. I want dogs to be neutral because that's how you end up losing your dog. Your dog runs over. Those are the dogs that when they're off leash, they run over to other to dogs and say hi. And the other person's like, my dog's not friendly. And you're screaming, mine is. And then they fucking call into my show and I call you an asshole. So, I mean, I didn't even know it was you that I was calling the asshole. So what I would, what I would do is, uh, you've got to pre bonk the dog, pre punish the dog before the walk. What's the state of mind of that dog while it's walking with no environmentals? Is it really in follow mode? Is it behind your leg? Is it really calm or is it aroused? If it's aroused, is it scanning? Nah, you can't scan right now. So that's how you start that. Start by eliminating that. Also remember guys, feel free to feel free to throw us a thumbs up. YouTube says, eh, maybe we should pay attention to this show. And then also, if you haven't subscribed, feel free to subscribe and then also hit the bell next. Melissa posts the links to your seminars. Oh, thanks, Melissa. Film project casting. I created a small bonker, dish towel size. Hopefully for a small dog. It works with my mini Aussie puppy. Nice. Truly, it's been amazing. She knows what no means. Thank you. Film project casting. Probably more important than yes, believe it or not. All right. No is what keeps dogs alive. Yes, they sort of learn that sometimes by default. But you obviously want to. We don't. We also teach yes as well. But no is way more important, in my opinion. Next. Little mama mud. Hey, you two. Warming up. Low forties. Nice. Ooh, his beat. Yes. Found his trigger. It's the pressure of the neck. Any and all pressure on the shoulders to the neck will trigger him to flip out. Was quite the test. So now what? What do I find? A, <laughs> you guys got chiropractors up in cold ass Canada. They live in the fucking Canadian tundra. What next? Well, you could put the dog in a harness, but that actually can cause pressure on the neck. You're going to have to do a heck of a lot of remote collar training with just food, but the dog goes after your hand for food. Probably should talk about it in our next, probably should do a Skype session pretty soon. I think I, I think I owe you 15 minutes still. Um, uh, I would actually, I would actually see if that's, if there's an injury, believe it or not, I would see if there's a disc issue. There might be some discomfort. There might be some discomfort there. So um, the first place I would do is go to a canine massage. They're the least expensive. Uh, muzzle them up, go to a canine massage. They can help you pinpoint an area. And then if they can't work it out, then you can go to a chiropractor, then you can, then you can get x-rays done. But if it's an injury, you stop training until it's fixed. Stop training like with, with, any, with anything other than like remote cow and food rewards. Next. Um, Stephanie, at park practicing e-call or recall would sometimes jump on an 8 to 10, but then other times seem to not even feel up to a 20. Not trying to focus on a number, but feels like I'm using too much or not enough. I got, I missed that whole thing, but I, but I heard that. So this is the thing. Um, it goes up to a hundred. You are focusing on a number. My dog blows through a hundred when he sees a squirrel. That actually just came up as a video. Sal the Mal. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mal, yeah. Sal the Mal That's came funny. up. Yeah. So, so it's just, don't, don't look at the number. Put tape over the fucking numbers and read the dog. Next. 
Kaylee J will be purchasing ticket for Wisconsin seminar soon. Very excited for it. Awesome. Pause DFW. One to two year old border collie mix with submissive urination. Oh, she yeah, will yeah. roll over and pee if you make eye contact or move towards her. Jesus Christ. That wants to put her on anti anxiety meds. Well, the dog doesn't need anti anxiety meds. If anything, the dog would get pro in. Like, the dog doesn't need anti anxiety meds for, for excitement pee. Or even if it was nervous pee, or even if it was fearful pee. Of course the vet wants to put the dog on meds because the med companies sent the fucking vet to Puerto Rico last week. Of course they do. By the way, that's what they do. Usually Las Vegas, though, or Costa Rica, or Miami, or you know some other conference somewhere where them and their partners can go. So, Or they fund something. Or there's discount. They call them discounts. There's yearly discounts that they get, which could be might as well just be like cash back. Call it what you want. You know, call it what you want. So, um, and if it's not happening, if you're a vet and it doesn't happen to you, well, your colleagues, it's happening too. Uh, so the thing is, this is we eliminate. First of all, don't let the dog roll on its back. Leash on the dog. Don't let it do. Don't let it practice that behavior. Through so our, we don't. We don't address. Um, we don't address nervous fear and excitement. P. We put the dog through our training program, and guess what? Remind me to do a fucking video of the, the pisser. All right. Yeah. Um, I'll come in tomorrow. Maybe if I have time. Oh, tomorrow's I might not have time, but let me get in there. All right. We'll, so great. We'll, we haven't had any social today. I know. Let me. Let me. Yeah. Let's do something. Um, and how we fixed it. All right. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Put him through the stru structure, 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 but don't let that dog flip on its back and practice that behavior. But please don't put the dog on meds for that. I'm not anti-meds, mm -hmm. but I'm anti-meds for 99.9% .9 of things. Next. Kathleen. Hi, I'm going to introduce the shot collar into my training with my eight-month-old boxer pit mix. Nice. My question is, when do you push the button when you say the command after or only as correction? Well, there's two. There's there depends what you're doing. When you're proofing the dog, you're teaching the dog how to escape pressure. And then when the dog knows it, you're te teaching them how to avoid pressure. So it's a very long answer. But start by watching my start by watching my um, YouTube how-to videos. It's not as simple as that. It's a longer answer than for this show. Next. Um, but I have free videos that will answer your question. Sorry. Diana, 14 months, one year. Anything new I can introduce to her? Um, the one that you're like, is it 14 weeks or 14 months? And what was the question about it, though? Or what should the what, dog be doing? Oh, be doing? oh, okay. Um, well, I don't know what you've done already, but sure. Yeah. It, teach it, do trick training. Do trick training. Teach it some tasks. Do some tasks. You know, picking stuff, sending them off and picking stuff up. Um, different tricks. Um, picking up a water bottle. Go fetching for a water bottle and bringing it back. Um, do odor work with the dog. There you go. Next. Um, we got a bunch of H's. Bunch of H's. European Doby on e collar responds to 16 on intro, but barely listens to 35 on a quiet street right outside our house. Is this okay? Well, the barely part's not okay. Let's go to a higher level. Guys, don't look at your numbers. They're called environmentals. I'm gonna do a tip of the day on this. This is the this is the tip of the day. I'm gonna give you a pre. I just came I because you're I you're not the only someone else asked me that earlier today on a on a on a on a post. So if you and I were in bed together, what, like, what is happening? Did you hear that? That's because we're not in bed together, right? So, <laughs> so, but if someone was in bed with me and my head was right by their ear, they would hear that. Got it? I love you. Now I'm speaking in a very soft tone into the microphone in a quiet room. You might have heard that. If all of a sudden we had music playing, I love you, you would hear that. If we were, if you were way far away from me, I love you, you might hear that. And if we were at a rock concert, I'm not gonna scream right now, um, but you would have to scream. Got it? Don't worry about the number. Read the dog. As long as the fit is correct and you know the dog feels it, which you do inside, don't worry about the number and don't try to do math equations in your head. Like, holy shit, that's four times the working level. It doesn't matter. The dog said that's the number that it needs, that it needs. Remember, 
Watch Sal the Mal video. It's on YouTube. Watch it. It was, it was put up, I think, today. Next. Um, Amanda, my dog is finally not barking, whining in a crate, but pants for hours after I leave. Yeah. Anything I can do to help her get calmer to stop this? Yeah, so Amanda, that's a rough one. Teach head down. Teach head down, but you can't re enforce that when you're not there as much as you can in the house. So it's called the double down. So dogs in a down, head down as much as you are. Send the dog to the crate. Put the dog in the crate while you're home. Door open, door closed. It doesn't matter. Enforce that down. Next. Those are Twitter notifications. I keep getting them too. Um, uh -uh. Yep, next. Mackenzie. Hi, guys. Just got caught up on listening to the replays on iHeartRadio. Nice. iHeartRadio. Shout out. Mary Ellen. Is it difficult to transition to a clicker if you've been using Yes? How would you begin? Thanks. Um, no, it's not. Watch. Go to... Um, Go to our FAQs. Go to our FAQ section on our website, Solid Canine Training, and it shows you how to do it. Next. Uh, Max Asina, adult female dog moves into household and will not stop humping three-year-old male dog that has lived in household. Nice. Reverse cowboy going on. I suggested a bonker. Okay. Cool. Sounds to me. Or, or a dressage whip. But I would definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's it's it. Humping is bad. It's going to end up being a dog fight. Next. Shana, thanks to your helpful tips, I've had the confidence to take on more clients. I got three new clients in one day. Awesome. What do you mean when you say shaping the behavior? Sh shaping the behavior? Shape Shaping a behavior, is, well, you can shape it with force. You can do it sort of free shaping. Free shaping we usually don't do. But simple thing is, technically a dog doesn't know what sit means. So if you... If you take food, if you're training with food, and if you hold the food up like this, so if I just say sit, and the dog doesn't know sit, okay, well, then let me start teaching it. So if I take food, if I hold it up, that could be shaping it. If I have to, technically, it's all shaping if you think about it. Some people call things free shaping, which means like there's, it's almost like there's no contact, but there's always, um, there's always information that has to go to the dog. So when we when we talk about shaping the behavior, how we talk about it, we're talking about it as like technically teaching with leash pressure, with a food lure, with maybe some some hand pressure, what we want the dog to do. Next. Um, Nesta dog. Hi, Jeff. Been using the bonker for a couple of weeks and it's working. Getting tickets for Elkhart, Indiana. Will you ever be close to Alabama? Nice, nice. Woo -hoo. That that was that's what. Nesta did. Yeah. Um, to Alabama, Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. I'm just like in my head. Where am I going to be? Atlanta. Yeah, hot Atlanta, North Carolina. Yep. I'm picking up an RV down in New Orleans and driving it. I'm probably going to be driving through. I might drive through Alabama next. <laughs> Get the groupies together. Yep. Mike, what happened with that dog that was on death row in your video this week that you showed was trainable? Was it spared? I'm not sure. There's been shitloads of dogs. I showed my video this week. This week? Was it an older video that just happened to get uploaded? Yeah. It was an old. I don't know. Pearl? That's the only dog that was technically like. Yeah. Pearl, it was Pearl. That She's deaf, right? The white deaf dog. That dog's doing great. It's up in Vermont. The owners it's came in. Owners with, today. It's our owners today. Um, I'm not sure which dog. I'm not sure which dog at all. But many dogs come to us from death row. Next. Sebastian, opinions on adopt, don't shop? Um, I think it's a bunch of fucking bullshit. Um, I'm not against adopting a dog at all. But we're all buying dogs, guys. We're all buying dogs. Sorry. How much is your adoption fee? It's $400. Great. It's a transaction. You bought the dog. You shopped for the dog. You went on the pet finder and you went, you did online shopping. You went onto a rescues page. You're online shopping. I'll take that one. Yep, you had to fill out an application. Yep, there was a home check. Yep, there was a vet check. It's a transaction. We're still shopping. And the dog that you adopt is most likely a puppy mill dog. So the puppy mill dogs are bad, but the adoption dogs are good. That doesn't make sense. It's the same fucking dog. And how about, and I'm not against rescue. I'm not against shelter. I'm not against adopt. So don't fucking turn this thing around and throw that shit at me. But 
this whole adopt, don't shop, it's a great fucking phrase that fucking gets people to donate money possibly. It makes great t-shirts and fucking memes, but it's a lie. And if I want to fucking go to Europe, as I do for a German shepherd, because I want a certain temperament to live with me, and if I want to spend $1,500, $3,500, I'm going to. And is that any different than you spending $400 and then spending $3,500 on a boarding train? What's the difference? No. Is my, does that make my dog better than your dog? No. Does it make your dog better than my dog? No. But we live in a free market economy. And we can do what we want. And my purchase, my purchase of a dog in Europe does not kill dogs in shelters. It didn't say, I didn't kill one dog in a shelter because I got a dog. And for me, especially to say that to me personally, as a few people did when I bought Kira. Oh my God, Jeff, you hypocrite. I remember getting emails. You hypocrite. I'm never going to watch your show again. I can't believe you bought a dog. You like... Jeez, I don't know, 10 million people have seen my fucking videos. I'd like to think I've saved a couple, you know, but, and good luck finding a good German shepherd and rescue. It's really, really hard. It's very hard. So next. Melissa, roommate has a Border Collie GSD mix that's a nightmare and starts fights three plus times a week with mine. I got bit trying to pull them apart. She gave up on training after a week of not spending any time with the dog like normal. Got a friend to do it that doesn't know how. No, dog no, 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 no. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. The dog goes or you go. Got it? Her dog goes or you go. Simple. I don't need to answer the question. This is not a dog training question. It's a roommate issue. It's a housing issue. She either gets rid of the dog or she keeps the dog in her room away from your dog. You keep your dog or you move. I would suggest you move. And don't say, oh, you know, I can't. I, I'm not saying you're going to say this. I don't have the money. Yeah, you do. Oh, I can't find another place. Yeah, you can. That's the answer. It's it's not a dog training question. Next. Okay. Um, Janelle, thanks for that. What would you what do you think I should tell the owner? Because I taught great obedience, but dog doesn't really listen to the owner. Thanks. Plus, I know you're so great. I'll move my family there just to work under you. Your knowledge is wonderful. I ain't that fucking great, but thank you for the kind words. Okay. This is the thing. Janelle, Janelle. Let's have a real, let's have a talk, man. Let's talk. Because obedience, if you're talking about the aggressive dog, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Obedience ain't going to fix that. Your job, your job, and I'm not throwing you under the bus, hon. I'm not throwing you under the bus at all. I love you. You know I do. But your job wasn't to train the dog. Your job was to get the owner to do what you do without having the skill set that you have. That's our jobs. That's our jobs. All right. So, God, I guess I should do fucking Skypes on this shit. I mean, I guess I should do fucking tips of the day and goddamn free consults on this shit for young dog trainers that are starting to do aggression work, right? Yeah. Can you make take a make a mental note? I'll remember. Yeah. I'll remember. I mean, Jan Janelle, do a Skype will be. I mean, I hate, I mean, that's what I do. That's how I make a living is through Skypes. I don't, I'm not trying to say this just so you fucking send me a hundred bucks for a Skype, but, but yeah, maybe let me see if I can start figuring out a way to give out free content to help trainers like that that are making those things. I mean, I've done stuff before casually, but yeah, next. All right. <clears throat> Jessica, my almost two year old shepherd is suddenly fearful of things, not previously afraid of. Hmm. She also, I'm like losing my voice. <clears throat> she also walks with her head down a lot. What can I do to build confidence? Almost two. That's an interesting age for that to happen. All right. I mean, dog's an adult now, but usually would have seen that a little bit earlier. Um, so check, check for vet. I doubt it's health. 
that would make the head go down or, or, or being skittish. But I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Could be. Um, check the dog's eyesight. I don't know. Dog go in and check, check, check their eyesight. Maybe. Probably not that. Probably behavioral. So what do you do? You, you start using a, high mo a better motivator. So is the dog food motivated, toy motivated, pressure motivated? Start doing some fun, exciting stuff with the dog. I mean, I don't mind the dog walking head down, meaning like, I hate to humanize it, but the dog is like sulking. Like, I don't believe dogs sulk, but that's the human version of an interpretation of a dog's body language that someone said. Like somebody commented today on um, uh, uh, the puppy, that the German Shepherd puppy. Really? Yeah, they, they said, they said, um, it looks sad. And I just, my, res time. My, my response was, okay. <laughs> I, I felt like saying it's because it hates us because we're mean to it all day long, but I, I didn't want to get started. It's like, okay, so the dog looks sad. So I don't know. I mean, to me, if the dog is calm walking next to you, that's all that really matters. That's all that really matters. What's the dog like not on the walk, right? As far as being afraid of things, maybe it's time to step up the training, step up the training. And just counter condition all that stuff by getting the dog used to the environmentals by your like basic common basic conditioning protocol is all done with clickers, food, and the environmental. Next. Amanda, my dog always sits with her back to me and looks over her shoulder at me outside in the house, etc. Any idea why she does this? I've got no fucking idea <laughs> whatsoever. You, you your dog's a snob. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know, bathe more. Maybe you stink. I don't know. So I I have no idea what it is. To me, I'm just like. I mean, take a picture. It's fucking cute, right? Take a picture and come up with some fucking meme for it and put it on a t-shirt and make a fortune. And who knows? I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be overly concerned about it. Next. Snob. Sounds like a fucking drama queen. Like, <laughs> are you talking to does it, me? Does it put his pop too? Like, <laughs> like I can see that. Shana. Actually, can you picture that? You know, you know I'm thinking Very clearly. It? Yes. You know how actually, I'm thinking of what's her name from um, 101 Dalmatians. I know the white fluffy one. No, I'm the, 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 the human, oh, the human, no. the human, the one with the long, the long fingers. Like I, 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 I picture her. Cruella? Sure, yeah. Cruella. Cruella. Yeah, I, I, I picture her doing that, but in a dog form. Next. Shana, I have great communication skills. Very politely, I tell owners, if you don't put in the work, it's not my failure. Don't lay that on my doorstep. That's your failure. Good. Awesome. If it works for you, keep it up, Shana. <clears throat> Janelle, when would you come to Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Would love to attend a seminar. I'm not. I'm going to be in Green Bay. <laughs> Janelle, get your ass to fucking Green Bay. I'm actually not, it's not even in Green Bay. It's west of Green Bay. I'm within hours of you. JeffGelmanSeminars.com. Come there. I'll fucking straighten your ass out. Come on. Mm -hmm. get, you will. Get there. Get there. Yeah, I mean, your average person drives six to eight hours to my seminar just to scale it. The record is 36. The record is 36. Someone drove all the way across Australia with three dogs, from Perth to Cairns with three dogs. That's the record. The average, people fly from other countries to go to the seminars for a weekend seminar. People, people like uh, in the US, the longest is 21 hours. Ooh. Yeah, M Martha. Yeah, I was lucky. I drove like 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Most people, <laughs> but most people drive six to eight. Next. Liz, what ages do you typically start to see dog aggression at training center and when are pups safely beyond it? Family thinks we're good with eight-month-old mal mix pups. Nope. I'm thinking 1.5 to two years to settle adulthood. Yeah, yeah. So this is the thing. We say we um, nobody's ever safely beyond it. We see dogs that are biting for the first time at six. We see dogs that are under a year old that they stop. So you're never out of the woods. I mean, my dogs don't bite, but they could. Uh, Ronan, who unexpectedly died, um, it's been about two months now, about two months ago, he was he was he was highly dog and human aggressive when I got him. Woo! I think I finally straightened it out when he was two, but that was because of like some intense, intense training mm -hmm. rehab. Was I won't even call it training? What happened? Um, and then he was bite free for. It was like a gentle giant. It was bite free for he died at nine. And then I've owned dogs that aggression came out at like four or five and just kept getting worse. So, you know, you don't you don't know. But for a Malinois that's under a year old, you don't even you're like you don't have problems yet. Like 
keep waiting. That's like saying, oh my God, my kids are so great. How old are they? Oh, they're 10 and nine. I'm like, okay. And you've never, like, you don't have any older kids? Oh no, these are angels. I'm like, okay. I'll talk. <laughs> okay. See you in five years. Okay. We'll talk. Is that a new top chat? Okay. Okay. I know you say that a lot. <laughs> Grant, Grant, where you been? Grant. Went to work with friendly dogs, got in fight in front of me, corrected with foot and stopped fight. Dog is sore and limp next day. How to explain? I kicked your dogs. Your dogs were fighting and I broke it up with my foot and now they're limping. That's how you explain it. You don't lie. You don't lie. You're transparent. You're transparent about it. You know, you can word it any way you want to, but you're transparent. You own it. You own it. Okay? That's my motto. You own it. You don't lie to people. You don't lie to clients. Okay? You might you might come out of it looking like shit, but you told the truth. That's just my that's just it's the way I was raised. It's my ethical code. It's my business code. It's my it's just the way it is. It's the way it is. Next. Uh, my dog rules Canine Academy. Just wanted to say, hey, love when I'm actually able to catch one of these live shows. Busy schedule, but grateful for that. My dog rules Canine Academy. Thank you so much. Glad to have you here. Next. Haley J had a rabbit surprise both my dog and I in the yard the other day. Dog was off leash and he turned on a dime back to me when I recalled him. So nice. Haley J, you don't fight, you don't let him chase the rabbit. <laughs> Look at rabbits are good. No fun. Come on. No fun. Come on. I mean, was it a slow rabbit? Come on. Was there a chance? Grab that rabbit. Cook that thing up. I wish my dogs would catch their own dinner. Do you see all the rabbits now? They're fucking they're they're taking over. <laughs> taking over. Now that Ronan's dead? Yeah. They're, they're, they're huge. They're huge. I think that's what that food is that gets left out. Is for. <laughs> the rabbits. You think so? They don't need any more fucking food. Next. Oh, Good, well, first of all, Kay Kaylee, Kaylee J, fucking kick ass training on your part. Awesome. Next. Hey guys, moving in with someone that has a dog. Is there anything we should avoid when introducing them? Plan to intro off property and then go into the house together. Tips. <laughs> Lindsay, did you hear me about was it Melissa or Melinda's fucking story up <laughs> above the advice? Okay. I mean, if you guys are sex partners, make it work. But if you're not, like, all right, do your best. This is the thing. Absolutely. There's all, first of all, there's there's so many nuances to this. So many nuances. Yes, off property, in motion. Don't I don't know the I don't know your roommates your lover's skill set I don't know their dog I don't know you I don't know your dog, um there's a lot of variables there's a lot of variables what I would do though is off, off I, how I introduce dogs to my dogs for the first time are a little bit different I don't recommend it um you don't even want to know I, I've shared it a couple of times um but with your average client I would say go go off property go on a structured walk um don't let them play in the house at all always be safe be safe. Both of you should be crating your dogs up. I would never leave them alone unattended, ever. Especially when you're like, not even in the next room, let alone like when you're out of the house. Crate your dogs. Your dog should be crated. Um, I usually am not a big fan of dogs in bedrooms, but it's a roommate situation. Put the dog in your bedroom. Put the dog in your bedroom. And um, don't try to get them to be friends. Like they don't need to be friends. They need to exist with each other. So goal one. Next. Roxy, hi, J&J. &J. How much sleep is too much sleep for a 13-week pup? None. Also, as much as it wants. <clears throat> sounds delightful. Yes. <laughs> also, when going for a walk, pup is scared to go towards the right of the house, but happy to go the other way. Should they keep trying? Walk backwards. Throw the dog off. <laughs> so walk backwards and go right. You'll be going, you'll be going, or go left. You'll be going right. Right? Um, sleep. <laughs> it's true. No. Angela and I got an interesting right-left conversation. Yeah. He's like, Papa, on your – he goes, Papa, um, on your left. So I'm like, I reach for my left. He goes, no, on your – your. I'm sorry. He goes, on your right. He goes, on your left. And I reach on my left. He goes, no, on your, your other hand. I said, no, this is my left hand. He goes, I know, but that's my right side. I'm like, no, Angela, when you talk to somebody, you, you refer to their side. So usually your left is my is my right. So no. Yeah. So I know that's why we now he knows. He never he doesn't know everything. So we have an educator, but he listens. He doesn't. He, now he knows though. You only have to tell him things once. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's got a photographic memory and he actually listens. Um, so as far as too much sleep, too much sleep, 
Um, there's no such thing as too much sleep for a puppy. 20 hours, 20 hours a day, 21 hours a day. Um, as far as like the outside, why does the dog do it? I have no idea. Maybe something is weird going on on the other side. Just what you can do is, is lure the issue, force the issue, try to go right a little bit, do things like that, or go around the fucking block and you ended up there anyway. Next. Storm was looking at your can seminar. Do you suggest a working spot? If you want me to, if you want to bring a dog and you want me to work even one thing, yes, I do. But you will learn the information is the same no matter what. Like you get to ask questions, you get to see, you're like the seating arrangement is the same. The question, the Q and A is the same. Um, you get to hear all my information. You get to see me working dogs. I just don't work with your dog. So that is personal choice. Next. Shalanda, hey, J times two. Can you correct for marking? Um, I, this is the thing. I say yes when you catch the dog in the act. I say yes. Some people say no. They'll say then the dog will be afraid to go to the bathroom in front of you. And it'll piss. And then when you want to actually go outside with it, um, it won't piss in front of you. To me, sorry. You fucking piss on my shit and I catch you in the act. It's going to suck. Next. Andrew says... Andrew Jen says, exactly my point about the hound dog, the family adopted, crying, laughing face. Yeah. I sent them to your website, so hopefully they have the time. Yes. Air quote. Good. Next. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you, Jeff, for all your content and passionate speeches. Learned so much and have been implementing your structured style. Have been such a huge improvement. You are the best. Elizabeth, awesome. And the magic there is the structured style. Even if you structured don't want... Structured style. Yeah, structured style. <laughs> I like it. Fuck you. Okay. So even, even if you don't like my training, take your training, but have structure. Next. With style. With style. <laughs> turf. Yeah. My Belgian turf would jump and nip at my waist when we tried to jog or run. I used the e-collar on him. I made it suck. He howled. Yeah. <laughs> he spelled it with two C's. I love it. He's not Only English. Just, he's not, a, he's not no, English speaking. No, that's like, that's like slang these days. Oh, like is it? Oh, I thought he was an English speaker. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Only did this once. He no longer tries to bite on our run. Success. Nice. You want to make fun of it? You've got two C's and two S's in success? <laughs> no, it's okay. like slang. It's funny. I didn't know it was slang. <laughs> Get with the times. Okay. Glenn. So, mm. <laughs> can I see? Next. <laughs> Turf. Congratulations. Sorry. Next. That's my line. Stop reading from my script. Glenn, I've been using your down technique on my Boston and it works great. Thanks, Jeff. Cool. The video works. <laughs> Who knew? He Good. actually kind of knows what he's talking about. Good job, Glenn. Glad. Next. Alex, serious question. <laughs> my God. My ex-girlfriend wants to know how to introduce a new boyfriend to her aggressive dog. <laughs> I say don't get a new boyfriend. No, Alex, <laughs> bullshit. Let her get as many fucking new boyfriends as you want to. And what you do is this. Alex, you say, okay, this is what Jeff suggests. Get a fucking hot dog. <laughs> cut it in half. Put it in the microwave for 11 seconds. So one, one. Okay, that way you don't have to lift up your finger. It's more efficient that way. <laughs> one, one. Stick the end of the hot dog in your mouth. Bend down and let the dog eat the hot dog out of the, the, the new boyfriend's <laughs> mouth. Do that. That's the advice you give her. Next. Then she won't, then you're trying to be helpful. She won't be able to hold on to a fucking boyfriend for the life of her. Oh my God, Mike. If practicing recall, sit down in succession. If Maddie comes and sits and goes down, when only can. Co what is it? Commanding to come? Yeah. Because she's anticipating. Should I correct to only do one command as requested? Yeah. Okay. So if you're if you recall, so if, I'm a pet dog trainer. So, but this is the thing: if your recall is recall to sit and the dog, and if you know if that's like that's what you have done, recall sit, recall sit, recall sit. And if the dog downs, yes, you should just know, and you actually can use leash pressure and say the word sit, and then to, to have the dog come up. You can absolutely do that next. Um, Turv, can you give us some examples of leadership skills like to do outside the house when out on walk? I think leadership skill, uh, uh, I think to me, a good leader teaches, but also empowers. So it's about, it's about guiding and then also giving, giving the dog choice to make the right or the wrong decision. So, um, 
It also could be on confidence building. So I want my dogs to be confident. So confident dog is a dog that I could work with and take more places. So it's my job to do that. It's pretty much about this concept. So it's, it's, so what's an example of a leadership skill? Advocating for your dog. So helping your dog when it needs help, holding your dog accountable when it needs to be held accountable, give your dog a little bit of freedom, but then also rein your dog back in. So pretty much it's not as much of a democracy. It's more of a dictatorship, but I'm not going to be, I'm not being a boss. So I believe in the difference between, I mean, a good boss is a leader, actually. A bad leader is actually a boss, if that makes if that makes sense. Next. Mm, I think you already answered that one for Grant. Yes, we did. Sue, thank you for your comments on Adopt, Don't Shop. I'm proud owner of two GSCs from very experienced breeders. Cool. Summer tried to adopt from two different rescues and was denied because my one-year-old male wasn't fixed. Never mind the fact that I've trained him not to hump or mark and he doesn't run free getting dogs pregnant. Mm-hmm. This is the thing, um, Summer. Are they adopting out intact females? Like, were, are they adopting out intact dogs? So, if their dog, if they don't, be, if they don't believe that they should adopt out dogs that are intact, well, that's fine. Then don't adopt out intact dogs. But don't judge me for not having my dog intact. Having a rep- reproductive system in an animal is not a sign of the quality of the care that you give that animal on the plus or the minus. So go to another rescue. That's the great part about the United States of America. We have that choice. If you're on the United States, just about any rescue in any country, you're probably going to go to another one. Next. <clears throat> Summer, getting a new puppy now. What should the first week or so look like with introducing them and getting a good routine from the start? Um, summer, just incredible structure. So brand new, brand new puppy. It's going to sleep 20 hours a day. We do all food protocols. Your dog's probably going to be a little bit afraid um, and nervous around a lot of things. So if you've got another dog, I have no idea what that dog is like around puppies. Even the best dogs suck with puppies. So it takes a sort of a special dog to be a good puppy raiser. Um, so you want to advocate for the puppy, but also make sure that the, the, the other dog is like, hey, these are the rules. You don't, you don't do these certain things. Massive amounts of structure for the first week, well, forever, but the first week, I would even maybe even keep them separate. Next. Mike, ever think of franchising your brand and having gallery training centers all over? Never, ever, 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 ever. Never say never. Oh, I'm saying fucking never. Not interested (laughs) whatsoever. That's not my business model. My business model is never, I've owned a lot of businesses in my life and franchise was never in there. Nope. Multiple centers, yeah. Deal. Yeah, multiple centers, yes. Franchises, no. Nope. I want to personally just travel the world doing seminars. That I'll do, but I'm not interested in that. That's just not my business model. That's not how my mind works. Next. Beverly, after accidentally being hurt by vet tech, dog lashes out at anyone who tries to touch except for family. Is there a remedy? There is a remedy. I, um, there is, um, it's clicker, clicker food touch protocols. Yep. So it's like, Dog is in a calm state. You have your bonker ready and you touch a part of the dog's body that it doesn't react to. Click food, click food, touch, touch, touch. Then hold your hand to the part that the dog you think is going to trigger on. Hold it out. Don't physically touch. Dog doesn't trigger. Boom, touch. I mean, I'm click reward. Just do that. Next. Kiki. Have you ever had a dog so reactive that it just became a management issue for the owners? Oh, God, yeah. Absolutely. This cure or fix, that's bullshit. Some dogs, yeah, but a lot of dogs, no. Next. Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. Hey, you haven't been on here in a while. I know. How are you? Hey, Jeff and Joelle, I'm getting a canine dog puppy each year. The breed is known for it to be territorial. How do you prevent territorial aggression? <laughs> <laughs> Right? (laughs) Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. We're talking genetics. Now, that doesn't mean we can't go against genetics, but, you know, if you want to be territorial, fine, but you can't bite anything. So I don't know what your skill set is. I would stop it any, I would stop it the same way I would stop any type of aggression, but I would, I would utilize some of that, that genetic makeup 
and put it to work and put it to work. But be careful what dog you get for like, you know, I, I, I owned a Turkish Kengel. I should own a farm. I should have livestock. I would encourage people getting a Kengel dog as a family pet. They should be worked. You know what I mean? They should be worked. So, you know, when I get a farm, I'll probably have a few of the perimeter protection dogs on there um, because it's a one. It's wonderful to watch them work. So, how do you stop a dog to do that? Is you would you would stop it like any pet dog training would. How I stop any dog from doing it, but I want you to, which which is you know, punishment for doing something it's not supposed to do. But if you're getting a dog from a young age, start at the very, very beginning with family pet dog training and don't let the dog be aggressive. Aggressive. So German shepherds are wary of strangers, right? They're wary of strangers. They're bonded to their family. They're like all this stuff. That's all cool, but you can't be attacking people that walk in the house that are invited guests. You know what I mean? So next. Um, Turf, can an e-collar be used to stop humping instead of a whip? I don't have a decoy dog. None of my family has a dog except for me. I'm asking because I don't want to go out in public with a whip for public reasons. Yes, it can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Gary, Jeff, my two golden, five months and two years, just keep wanting to play. Lots of soft play mouthing. How do I keep it from going too rough? So, Gary, first of all, I do allow that. I let my dogs play fight. Hopefully, the two-year-old will kick the five-year-old's ass if it gets too um, uh, rough with it, but don't let it constantly do that because that five month old is eventually going to be an adult and the dog's going to go, Oh, I'm bigger and stronger than not you now. Fuck you. Um, what I would do is, has it gotten too rough? What you want to do is put an on off switch in the dog. So I let my personal dogs, my personal dog with each other play rough. I don't let them play rough with anyone else. So like when my dogs are hanging out with Joel's dogs, they're not allowed to do that at all. Um, with each other, they can, and vice versa. I don't want her dogs playing rough with my dogs. Uh, but with each other, they can. So her dogs play with each other. My dogs play with each other. My staff members' dogs, they play rough with each other. But we don't. I don't let my dogs do with anyone else. Have an on-off switch. Enough. Boom. They have to learn enough. Let them play. Boom. Stop it. Next. Um, Key, Key Bear, 2008. My dog shits in the house. Should I take the shit and put it in his food bowl? If you want to. <laughs> Okay, sure. Why not? Next. Uh, Shana. Just don't put it in the microwave because unless the food bowl is microwave safe. Next. Started training three-month-old English bulldog. We just had second lesson today. She now knows sit by verbal command when I point at her and when I stand directly in front of her, she knows place down and give give me paw. Is accomplishing those commands in two lessons considered okay, very good, or excellent? I'm curious. So I don't, you want me to rate you as a dog trainer? Come on. I've got a fucking ego, but Shayna, let's go. It's it's a puppy. It'll do a lot of stuff right now. Let's wait until it's older and there's distractions. So you you can take a puppy and you can teach a puppy a lot of stuff in two sessions. But that's because they're eager to learn and they're food and they're and they're usually food motivated. I don't know. I've got no idea. I mean, right now the big the big test is when it's older and things are distracted and all the, and all your training goes out the door. And you try to get duration and you try to get the dog around distraction. Mm -hmm. But you tell me, are, do you feel you're, you're doing a good job? Don't worry. about. And I, I'm sort of busting your balls a little bit because don't worry about what I think. And I'm not going to fucking rate you on a goddamn scale. <laughs> this isn't the fucking voice. <laughs> I don't know. I I'm if you were a it's like I'm going. <laughs> oh, I, I got a fucking great commentary on the voice, by the way. I only see clips. I got a great commentary on the fucking voice. That, that 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 is, but we're 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 running out of time. We got a lot of questions. All right. Yeah, voice judges. The voice judges. I got an interesting observation about that. Next. All right. Um, Sebastian. summer. No. Oh, summer. All the dogs from the two rescues are fixed. I was even applying for other males. <laughs> what are they fucking afraid of? Gay sex? I mean, give me a break, <laughs> hypocrites. But summer, you go to you go to another rescue then. Go to another rescue. Next. Or, or, or buy a fucking dog. Right? Buy a dog. Buy a dog from a breeder that you want. That's what you do. 
and all the fucking rescues to put all these fucking restrictions can go fuck themselves. You want to fucking look up my ass? Do you want to see if I got any fucking polyps up there? What else do you want from me? Huh? You want to adopt out the dog or not? Give me a fucking break. What business are they in? Are you trying to save dogs' lives? Are you trying to fucking earn wings so you can fucking make it up to heaven for all the fucking sins that you did for the last 35, 40 fucking years? But if you really want to save fucking dogs' lives, adopt out the damn dogs. If they're hypocrites. Not all of them. I have, a, I, have, I have a huge rescue following. Not all of them. But. Next. He's not mad. He's passionate. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. I know. I know. I'm, not, a, I'm not angry. I'm Peace not mad. Up. No. I'm, mm. I'm fucking fine. My blood pressure didn't even go up. I got a fucking blood. We should fucking hook a blood pressure <laughs> fucking meter to me. Let's hook up a blood pressure <laughs> while, while I'm doing this show. It's like, it's like Jesus Christ, Jeff. Your blood, really not it's like your blood pressure even fucking go up. No, it doesn't. I'm fucking calm as a cucumber. Next. Oh my God. Um, Sebastian. Sebastian, my pup isn't reactive, but usually sits in hardcore stares at another dog if we're on a walk. I can usually get his attention back with a treat, but should I be correcting him with a punishment? I don't want to develop into reactivity. Um, I mean, if you're if you're if if you're on a walk. And the dog sits and stares. Well, then you ain't fucking walking. So the dog's controlling the walk. So if you were, if the dog, to me, I would just go, well, no, the do- you would, you wouldn't punish, you would, you wouldn't pu- technically punish the dog for staring. You're just like, well, you're not healing with, excuse me, you're not healing with me. Let's heal. That's all. Next. Mm, Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. Oh, wait. Yeah. I was forced to get rid of Kona because the leasing office was getting about her being aggressive. I'm the only one in the complex who has control over their dog. I was taking her to a leadership trainer nearby, and she made wonderful progress compared to how she was when I first mm. got her. It, it sucks. I know. It sucks. That's the thing about apartment complexes, HOAs, co-ops, condos. That's the problem. That's the problem. I know. It sucks. Next. Um, Lindsay, not lovers, just roommates. She's excited. That's what they all say. Stop. (laughs) She's excited for me to help her with her dog. Showed her all your prong videos today, and she's excited to start working with her own dog with prong. Thanks to your videos. Awesome. So, Lindsay, cool. So, so guess what? You're going to have some fun then, man. You're going to have some fun. Boom. Training partner, let's go. Let's conquer this fucking world together. Just go and do it. Nice. Doug Aid in VA. Good points about dog rescue groups. Nearly all women into saving dogs, not handling or training skills. Doug, you don't fucking need to get sexist on my show. Okay? Next. How about this? All rescue people are saving dogs. Next. Melissa, is it normal for my dog to shake for a minute after a quick pop on the prong collar for a correction? It is, absolutely. Next. Michelle says, Jeff isn't mad. He's passionate. No. Yeah. Passion is fucked. Next. TM. Passionate is fucked. <laughs> Red Riding Hood and the Wolf says, oh, complaints. Yeah, complaints. Yeah. Back to the other question. Yeah. Kate, I uh, recently started using prong dog attempts to avoid it. Acts afraid, cowards to humanize behavior. Yeah. How long is this considered normal? Great behavioral results using it. So I plan to continue. Just curious. So what I would do is this. Clicker food prong protocol. Got it? Put a slip lead over the dog. Call the dog over. Tell the dog to sit. Boom. Click and reward. Take the prong collar out. Hold it out in front of the dog. No negative reaction. Boom. Click reward the dog. Um, um, Shake the collar around. No negative reaction. Click. Boom. uh, uh, Reward the dog. Let the dog sniff it. Just do that. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Next. Um, Steve, what is the best way to introduce another dog into my household? Right now I have two dominating pits and one chihuahua. Thanks. So Steve, why do you want to bring another dog in your household? I, I'm, I'm, being sincere. I'm not saying not to, but that's the first question that I would ask why. So you got two bully breeds that are strong and powerful that you have labeled dominating. That doesn't mean aggressive, but dominating. How about if you get another dog that also 
feels like it wants to dominate too. And then there's a chihuahua in the mix. Why? I would, I would, and I did that. That's it. So how to introduce it. And I, I don't, I'm not mad at you, Steve at all. I mean, everybody knows that. I mean, I just love people. I just like to throw shit out there to make people think because I don't know you. I don't know your skill set. I don't know your dogs. You have three dogs and now there's one more being introduced. I have no idea what the best way will be. I have no idea what the best way will be. There's too many variables there that could end in a disaster. And I would hate to give you a 30 second suggestion that ended up with a thousand dollar vet bill or the death of a dog. Next. <clears throat> Allison Gifford. Allison. Love you guys. Arlo says good night. Hello, Allison. Hi, How are Allison. you? Didn't know she was on. Shana, no ego here at all. Just insecure sometimes. Always trying to do better. Well, you know what they say about ego and insecurity. So guess what? You're always going to be insecure. You're always going to be insecure. You're always going to be second guessing yourself. You're always going to think you could have done it better. You're always going to think someone else is doing it better. It's work on personal growth. Get Brene Brown. Read Brene Brown. Start with that. Okay, next. Okay. Um, Sue Mason, I want that t-shirt. Passionate as fuck. <laughs> it's a good one. Next. Or just like passionate AF. Yep. Lindsay, by the way, Leo has been bite free and a hundred times calmer for two months. Out command wow. was a game changer to get him to stop going after people that came up to me. Wow. Holy shit, Lindsay. Wow. Look, look at that. Next. Uh, Mike, I introduced 10-week-old cat to a six-month-old Griff. They seem to get along. No sign of aggression, but Griff often follows the cat around. Crack with Stim? Is this the right protocol? Um, well, it's a young dog still. It's a young dog, and it's a young cat. So following the dog following dog around, I mean, that's not a bad thing. That's not a, Unless you told the dog what to do. So I wouldn't necessarily correct that. Unless the cat was trying to get away. So is the cat, is the cat trying to get away from the dog? The cat's trying to get away from the dog, then you're not being, then you're not being fair. Then you're not being fair. So, but but let's just let's just see how it works out. Let's see how it works out. Because it'd be cool if they got along great. Next. Um it's not lying down right now. If your dog is if your dog is walking around right now. Or hopefully it's not at the fucking window barking its head off, you know, because then we really need to talk. Call your dog over to you right now, right now while we're on the air. Tell your dog to down. And it shouldn't move. Well, we're only on the show for another two more minutes. But if we were on the show for another hour, I wouldn't want that dog to move for the whole hour. And if it can't do that, then you're not ready to have a baby yet. That's not to say people can't have a baby that don't have that skill set in the dog. But in my world, I want to include your dog into your life with your child. So the best way to do it is have a dog that knows how to do nothing in a world of chaos. And that it can be underneath our voice control, underneath voice control. So what I want you to do is start following my, start following my videos, start using the tools, techniques, and philosophy that I believe in. Um, watch a lot of my content and then start with a place. Start with healing your dog. Place is big. No rushing the door. No barking. Please create your dog. Create your dog being quiet in the crate. If the dog is in your bed, get it the fuck out of your bed. If your dog is any guarding you or resource guarding you or separation anxiety, watch my videos on how to eliminate it. If you try to uh, hug your husband and the dog gets even weird at all, like, you know, if my dog is being jealous of that. Fucking knock that shit out right now. Okay? Any barking, any around, just, well, I got free videos for everything. Next. Um, Connie, Shiba Inu, one year old, suddenly is attacking dog yep. at home and all others. Yep, because it's one years old and now that's the dog. That's the dog you got. So that isn't the dog you have to have, but that's who you got. So it's no surprise. One years old, all shit hits the fucking fan. So what I would do, so what I would do with that information is we're going to stop that right now. What's the leadership look like? What's the structure in the house look like? What's the consequences for unacceptable behavior? Training the dog on a shock collar. Do you believe in punishment? Um, not yelling at your dog and putting it in the crate. That's not punishment. Punishment is a consequence that's unbearable to the dog. So um, you've got to 
be proactive by trading a lot of stuff, but then also you've got to be able to punish the the bad stuff, the bad stuff. Next. Susan, hi from California. Bodhi flinches when I pet him on the head. Nervous? Yeah, obviously nervous. Check for teeth. Check, make sure the teeth are okay. Make sure the ears are okay. And do um, uh, do clicker counter conditioning by doing touch protocols with the clicker and food. Next. Um, Connie says, perfect. <clears throat> awesome. That's the last one. Oh, my God. What do you know? <laughs> one, right on time. one hour and 30 minutes and 33 seconds. Guys, one last time to give me a thumbs up. One last time, so well, you can you can subscribe anytime you want to. Subscribe to the channel, hit your notifications, um, guys. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you being here. I love all of you. You're all very very special to me. Thank you so much. Jump onto our Instagram channel and IG stories on Monday. We have our AMA, my Patreon channel. You can ask questions there for the Q and A. patreoncom slash trading. I do this trading three days a week. So lots of free content out there. Obviously, you can Skype with me. So, um, and to get Skype information, just go to the website. Go to the website, you can do that. Go to Jeff Gelman Seminars, jeffgelmanseminars.com. Um, and you can see my seminar schedule, the ones that are coming up real quick. Excuse me, Florida? Where in Florida? It doesn't matter. Florida, <laughs> drive. Um, and Seattle, which means Portland can go to Seattle. Canada can go to Seattle. You know, a lot of places south can go to Seattle. A lot of people can go to go to Seattle, right? Plus, it's an easy airport to fly into. It's a nice airport, actually. What do they call it? SeaTac? SeaTac, I think. Anyway, I think that's what it's called, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, you're, no. Never been. Oh. You've never flown into stone. All right, guys. May I be in love with you, and I'll see everybody later. Good night. Good night.